All right, welcome back to Anton Math. And in this video, we're talking a little bit more about amplitude, and then we're also going to talk about the change of period in these um, sine and cosine functions. Now, when we left off last time, uh, I had said that this value right here, this value in front of these uh, sine and cosine functions, is called the amplitude. And in general, if we have some function, y equals a sine x, or y equals a cosine x, right, where a is just some number, the absolute value of a is what we're going to call the amplitude of the function. Oh, that's a very bad d. Amplitude of the function. And what that means is this total absolute value, that's going to be the furthest distance that the graph goes above or beyond its central horizontal axis. Now remember, if we have a vertical shift, if I was adding 2 to sine, for example, my central horizontal axis would be on this line, y equals 2. But as long as there's no horizontal shift, we'll be using the x-axis to be what I'm talking about. So notice in this um, first graph, the one in blue, y equals 2 sine x. My amplitude, or absolute value of 2, is just 2. And 2 is the total distance, the total maximum distance that this graph is going to ever be away from its horizontal axis, isn't it? You see I go up to 2 and I go down to negative 2. So a total distance of 2 is the furthest I go. And then here again in this red graph, y equals 1 half. 1 half is again the furthest distance that I ever go from my horizontal axis. All right, so we call that the amplitude. And in a lot of questions you'll be asked to find the amplitude, and, and that's what that's going to mean. Now I want to extend this a little bit more. We have these kind of general equations here, but I want to add another element to it here. I, I kept all this up to talk about amplitude, but now we're going to talk about something new. If I have the functions or the equations y equals a sine kx, right, I can do it in parentheses or y equals a cosine kx. I often won't do parentheses, but this is just so you a little more clear what I mean here. What this means is that my argument is no longer just x, it's x times some number k, right? So for example, we get to have y equals sine of 2x, right? So before, we had a period of 2 pi. Now what that meant is, as x, right here in my original function, as x was going from 0 to 2 pi, right, I was completing one period of my graph. Now up here, if we have a coefficient in front of that x, now I'm looking at kx going from 0 to 2 pi, aren't I? This is going to be my new full period, because really it's just the total argument of sine or cosine that needs to go from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm no longer looking at x goes from 0 to 2 pi, I'm looking at one period is going to be when kx goes from 0 to 2 pi, or in other words, as x goes from 0 to 2 pi over k, isn't it? Right? When x equals 0, kx equals 0. And when x equals 2 pi over k, kx equals 2 pi. Those k's cancel, right? We have plugging in uh, 2 pi over k for x, I have k times 2 pi over k equals 2 pi. So as x goes from 0 to 2 pi over k, uh, kx is going from 0 to 2 pi, thereby completing one period of my sine or cosine function. So we have this new note, I need to note that my period of any function that looks like this is going to be equal to 2 pi divided by k. And remember I also had another piece of information from this video, amplitude is equal to the absolute value of a, right? This is from these general equations. And these equations are going to be just a little bit more complicated before we're done here in the next video. But so far, these are the two pieces of information that we need to know when we're graphing these equations. Now let's go ahead and, and do some examples. I've 
I've talked a lot here, but let me let me show you a little bit. Let's say that I have uh, y equals sine of 2x, right? I know that my amplitude a is going to be 1 here, isn't it? My amplitude's not changing, but my period is going to be 2 pi over k, and here my k is 2, right? So I get a cancellation, so my period is only equal to pi. Now, what does that mean when I'm graphing? That means that I'm still starting at 0 with my sine graph, but I'm going to go all the way up, all the way back to the axis, all the way down, all the way back up, do my entire sine graph in a period of pi. So my graph's going to be ending right here. Now we don't have to go through and, and find all of the points necessarily because the pattern of the graph is going to be the same, right? Notice that in my basic graph I cross the x-axis halfway through my period. So that's still going to be the case here. I'm still going to cross the x-axis halfway through my period with this sine graph. I reach the top, which in this case is going to be 1, because I have an amplitude of 1, at 1 quarter of the way through my period. So this means that at pi over 4, about right here, I'm going to be going up to 1. And at 3 pi over 4, I bottom out, don't I, with sine. So at 3 pi over 4, I'm going to be down here in the bottom. So this new graph, sine of, or sine of 2x, is going to look like this. Right? It looks just like sine, but I've kind of compressed it over to the left. I've shrunk the period down to pi, and that's what y equals sine of 2x looks like. Now let's just do one more example before we finish up and move on to the next video. Let's say I have y equals sine of uh, 1 half x. All right, y equals sine of 1 half x, that means my period now It's going to be equal to 2 pi over k, or 2 pi divided by 1 half. That's the same as 2 pi over 1 times 2 over 1, right? We divide by a fraction, means we multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to have a total period of 4 pi. Now my graph below is not going to be able to contain this, but a total period of 4 pi, that means halfway through this graph, I'm going to be at 2 pi, right? I know that's the next place that I cross the x-axis. So just the first half of my graph, well, let's be a little more careful here, at pi, that's where I'm going to top out, right? At a quarter of the way through my period, that's where sine peaks to the top. So the first half of my graph, ooh, really bad, is going to look like this, isn't it? And then my second half is going to start off. I'm just going to go down over to the left. Maybe I'll, I'll draw the left side here so we can see what this looks like. I'm going to bottom out at negative pi, also at 3 pi, aren't I? So the left side of this graph looks like this, with over here being negative 2 pi. All right. So this is how we uh, observe a change in period. Now, we're not quite to the general function, or the general form. In the next video I'm going to introduce the total or the, the the general form of these equations. And for every problem that we're graphing a trig function, our first goal is going to get it into a general form where we can derive out all this information, this amplitude, this period, and any of the shifts to the left or right up and down. And we're going to be able to use that information to very quickly and efficiently draw out these graphs. Alright, we'll see you in the next video.